good things, especially the last 36 minutes uh, of the game. Um, I think the thing that stands out the most to me as I was watching the game and then you look at the stat sheet was our unselfishness. You know, I thought even sometimes we passed up shots to uh, go from a good to great or shot or, you know, we were very, very unselfish. I thought guys were in tune to the offensive game plan, recognizing that we were playing against a shot blocking team. And um, I, thought, I thought we just really sprayed the ball, really shared the ball. You know, defensively, I thought the four mi first four minutes we weren't ready. That's why I went to the first, uh, that quick timeout. I usually don't do that. You know, we'll take a look at it. You know, Nana, uh, Ray, Amon, uh, myself, and Tracy will be responsible for making sure that guys are, you know, ready to go defensively. Uh, starts with me and uh, our leadership. So we'll figure that out. But after, the, after that timeout, I thought we got locked back in defensively. And uh, you know, we made a few errors here and there, but we'll learn from those and get better. Uh, but again, I think the thing that really stood out was the guy's unselfishness. And, um, you know, there were some possessions there that were pretty fun to watch. We played like a team, thought we moved the ball well, and, uh, and uh, obviously we took advantage of that and made, made some shots um, here tonight. Questions for the players? <coughs> You know, when Coach always brought up sacrifice during the offseason, it seemed like you know, maybe you were a big part of that. But what's it like to try and go from the leading scorer? And, and what's that process like to try and you know, share and things like that? I mean, this is just real easy. I mean, we just uh, don't care who's going to be the leading scorer. I mean, it could be somebody different every night. We just, like Coach said, we're just very unselfish now. And we all, like, bought in, like, as a team. And know that it's starting on defense. You seem to be shooting the ball so well from three-point range, just so much confidence. I mean, if, is that just the off-season work? Or? Uh, it just comes from all the work uh, we put in. I mean, our whole team put in uh, thousands of shots in the summer, so we just all just became better shooters. And, of course, I mentioned that you guys are playing against a shot-blocking team. Were you making a conscious effort to get out of the paint a little bit and knock down some outside jumpers and bring those guys out, or is that just kind of the way things flow for you? I um, mean, that's kind of the way things flow, but, you know, the game plan was to, you know, come in and make the extra pass, you know, drive into the lane. And then once you get the ball in the lane, if you're going to go for a shot, you make sure you shot block. And I think we did a great job about, of doing that. I mean, Hill and, and Ray did a great job of pump faking, getting in once, you know, they're strong with the ball and really had really good finishes. So I think we really came in with a good mindset and really uh, played out really well. How does it bother you particularly, but there's some people maybe were concerned about you not scoring a whole lot the first couple games. Um, that you, you can sit with the ball in basket every once in a while. Yeah, I mean, this is a fun, this is a fun team to be to be honest to play with because you. I mean, sometimes I wish I could just you know sit back and just watch us, which I do. I mean, on the bench, and it's fun to do because that's not really fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I mean, it's just, just to see them. Uh, you go uh, pass, make the extra pass, and, and we play so unselfishly. It's really fun to watch offensively. So, I mean, we, we all, this year, I mean, we're really, really unselfish, uh, and it shows with the amount of we've had, you know, during, during the course of the year. But I think the main thing is, is that this is just three games, and we have to continue to do this and be consistent with it throughout. Uh, the whole year, and if we can keep doing this, having 20 assists like this in January and February, I think we'll really be in, in business offensively. Ray, does it does it feel different this year than it did last year? Just the feeling you get about the the, the team and what it's capable of. I mean, they're just two totally different teams. I mean, we got uh, like more shooters, uh, more people that can score, but uh, we know that it's start on the defense end. Yeah. Ray, how has the addition of Ahmad and Aaron help with that cause with the shooters. I mean, obviously they come in and they're lights out shooters. Just does that just loosen everybody else up? I mean, uh, I mean, you gotta stay on them. So I mean, I think it opens up opportunities for everybody. I mean, uh, you can't leave those two guys, and if you do, I mean, they're gonna make you pay for it. Anything else for these guys? All right. Let's get some rest. <coughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not overly, he, he, man wants to win. Um, you know, we're not overly concerned about that, you know. Uh, you know, he affects the game in so many ways, Marcus, that don't show up on the stat sheet. I've been saying that for three years, that it's really remarkable. Uh, tonight, obviously, he affected it both with the intangibles and on the stat sheet. Uh, tonight, made some shots. You know, I, I thought, you know, about everybody made shots tonight at a high percentage and except for Kaz. He had some great looks and some of them just didn't go in. Uh, but he really epitomizes this team. Four assists, zero turnovers. 
didn't really force anything and, and played his tail off on the defensive end guarding the ball. You know, we just don't, we're not trying to get caught up in that. You know, if he gets seven or eight looks like he got tonight, I like the chances that half or more than half of them are going to go in most nights. You know, so the other guy shot, you know, pretty well from the field from a percentage standpoint. Uh, it was kind of one of those nights where shots were falling. But I do think uh, when the ball has energy like that and it's just moving like that freely and guys are that unselfish, you know, sometimes the basketball gods will take care of you. John, is there any, uh, Ahmad was like one out of five in the first half, mm -hmm. was five of ten. Is there anything to the idea that maybe he's a slow starter or his? Yeah, it's too early for that. You know, he's. You know, he didn't didn't make them early. He made them some similar shots he took in the second half. As long as they're good ones, that the guys will tell you, I, I don't really care about that. I mean, they, I want them to play freely and attack and be aggressive and, you know, work to get good shots. And we've got so many. This is a different team than the first two years because we have multiple weapons and shot makers. You know, so right now our guys are more concerned about getting our shot. Let's make sure we get a great shot. You know, a lot of times we're putting guys out there for all four, at least four guys guys can shoot threes, sometimes five, and uh, guys are capable of making plays, and so just kind of take what's there. I thought tonight we had a real good chemistry, a real good pace and harmony uh, to our offense, uh, maybe the best uh, at, at, that we've had to this juncture. Can you talk about that unselfish factor? How much, when uh, when you have a team, how much is that just like innate in those types of players that you have? Or, and if you don't have that, how hard is that to coach into a team? Well, these guys are a pleasure to coach because they want to get better. I mean, they just, you know, we, you know, I enjoy coaching them. They respond. Uh, you know, last Saturday, about a, I mean, I, I was on them pretty good last Saturday, and they came out on Sunday, and, and they really played. So, you know, I, I just think they're very coachable. They want to be good. They care about each other. And then I think, Shannon, it's a culture thing a little bit. You know, it's, it's kind of like, three years a little bit in the making or two plus years in the making, you know, where, you know, f you finally everybody's drinking that Kool-Aid a little bit. Um, you know, it takes a while to build culture. And uh, I always to remind them that you have to protect it. Uh, you know, so, but, but I, I think t today we, we played the way that we played the game the right way, you know. And uh, that, that's kind of what we're going to aspire to do moving forward. And, you know, hopefully that becomes a consistent theme for us as the season moves along. John, we, we haven't seen you as much as you, obviously as you do, but I mean, we're, we're, we're all sitting there thinking this is going to, this is taking a little time to get used to. We're not used to this. After last season, when did it dawn on you that this was kind of what you made? Mm -hmm. Last year during practice when I saw those guys sitting out. Yeah. And then I knew that Hill and Nunn were better shooters than they were statistically early. But I've, I've went through freshmen before. Yeah, I've used the analogy of, you know, I was a coach at Ohio State when John Diebler was a freshman. And John, if you look back at his percentage, I mean, he had a heck of a rut there for a while. But you just knew it was a matter of time. I mean, you know, same thing with Hill and Nunn. So now those guys have matured a little bit and figured it out. And Cosby and Starks add some shooting and firepower. And then Ray was very humble when he was asked the question. But, like, Ray was in this morning. He comes in every game day and shoots for, like, 30 to 45 minutes in a sweat. You know, Ray's a guy all summer that's in there getting extra shots up when no one's looking. And I'm coming to the office to grab something, and he's in there with music on in a full sweat. And he, he's not the only one. I mean, he's right. There's other guys. But Ray's getting what he deserves and has earned you know, and then, uh, you know, I thought Shannon had a good point there. His mindset, you know, you gotta, you're got you the one guy, I remember it was Jeremy, uh, that goes from being the leading scorer where every possession was kind of, last year a lot of them offensively was on him and Abrams. You know, now it's a much different team, and I really applaud Ray for his maturity level and his unselfishness and his ability to adjust uh, pretty quickly. John, it seems like that you've been... Uh driving the hoop a lot more this year and drawing fouls and getting to the free throw line quite a bit more than you did last season. Yeah, I mean, we'd like to get there even more. Uh, but, you know, we've got such good shooters that I don't want them to pass up good ones, you know, that are uncontested. Um, you know, so we try to play inside out as much as we can. I thought tonight we attacked the paint that led to some dribble penetration, driving kick threes that were good. Those are always good threes. 
Uh, but I thought our attack was good. I thought Tate was terrific in the first half. I mean, I thought he was good at both ends of the floor. I thought he pushed the pace. I think he was 4-0 to at the half. I think he finished with that. But that was all in the first half. I mean, I thought he had a real good – He when he came in, he and that group that came in at the 16-minute mark, just like really they've done before, sparked us a little bit. Uh, when you have a guy with his motor and Black's motor and – you know, none comes in. Those guys bring bring a punch. Uh, you know, off the off the uh, off the off the bench there as, as uh, reinforcements. So it was. You know, I, I thought that that stint there after the first four minutes was really key, and I think those guys that came off uh, the bench there really supplied that energy level to our team that we needed. If you think back to your when your last Ohio team got rolling. And the way this team is playing now, is this close to, to, to what that was? It's closer, uh, deeper, more shooters, um, over, overall athleticism, you know, similar. There's some similarities, but we've got a long way to go to, you know, be as good as that team was playing late in that year. You know, we got a long way to go. Coach, how do you keep the, the players ground? Their offense is going really well right now. and try to keep them focused on the defense and not get too excited with the offense going so well right now. Well, it really starts with leadership, and you heard those guys talk, and they know. Um, you know, I think sometimes I gave them a quote this week from John Gordon, my energy bus guy, uh, that success doesn't always breed success. Oftentimes it breeds complacency and amnesia as to what got you there in the first place. You know, and those guys know. I mean, they, they know. Uh, you know, Friday night, opening night, we did not play with the, for the bulk of the game with that type of defensive intensity and mindset and commitment to that end. You know, we certainly gave Georgia Southern uh, a lot of credit for that. But I didn't like our mindset. They know. Uh, and hopefully that was a valuable lesson learned by us. Um, but they know. These guys are older. They know that it starts with defending and rebounding. And then everything else kind of, you know, flows from there. There were, I guess, I lost track of how many threes were shot. Twenty-five. Were there any you don't you didn't like? Any? Mm, I'll have to take a look at it. Not off the top of my head necessarily. Um, I can't think of one. I mean, I don't. I don't remember one. Maybe the one at the end of the half that Tate got fouled on because I didn't like the execution and we got bailed out there a little bit. You know, it was worked out for us and he made all three free throws. Obviously, he had to shoot it. There was a second left. But we were supposed to execute something a little bit better, so we weren't in that heave ho situation. Uh, but other than that one, Steve, I, not any really come to mind. Well, less of those heave ho situations this year, isn't it? Yeah, we've got more weapons. Uh, we, you know, I think we also execute better. You know, part of it is certainly personnel, but part of it is we execute better. We screen better. We cut harder. We we're committed to running. We're deeper, so we're able to run and play transition basketball for longer periods of time. Um, I thought our first year team tried to do that and then just kind of ran out of gas a little bit. You know, but right now, you know, if the Lord continues to bless us with good health, you know, we should be able to sustain that for a lot uh, longer period of the season than what we did in year one. When you see the team play like this and click, how excited are you to go like to the next challenge and play some high major opponents? Somebody. You know, the I'm not even thinking about that. You know, I'm obviously we got Brown on Monday. We got practice tomorrow. I got to get back to the office. I get a folder on Brown. I'll sit down with Jamal, uh, and he'll go through it with me. And we're meeting at 10:30 in the morning with the team. So you know, we'll be all of us will be up late tonight, making sure we've got all our ducks in a row. Um, we're going to take it one game at a time. Nana does a great job of reminding the players of that. Certainly, with everything he's been through over two or three years, the importance of taking it one game at a time, and so the leadership helps in that regard. Um, but you know, obviously, we got you know more challenges coming, and you know the Big Ten will be here before you know it, and we want to make sure we maximize every day so that we're getting better and improving uh, leading up to conference play. John Mav, you know, was the last off the bench. Is that just because of the hand wrist or? No, I think Colbert's, you know, earned it. You know, obviously I thought Mav did some good things tonight. Um, you know, we'll, we'll ho hopefully get to the point where he doesn't have to wear that soft cast on now. I do think it affects him a little bit, Jeremy. And, uh, you know, we're, we're counting on Mav. Mav's going to play an in, in, in important role with his body and his size, you know, especially in our league. Um, uh, but, but Colbert has earned, you know, the minutes he's, you know, the minutes he's playing at, uh, uh, at this point, although... 
And the other day I tried to explain to him who Lester Hayes was from the Raiders and I'm too old, but I used to tell him he used to wear stick on me, put stick on his hands and I'm tired of him getting the ball smacked out of his hands, so I told him it's probably illegal, but I said we may have to put some Lester Hayes stick them on your hands and don't let these guys smack and take your ball. So that's another that's a thing he's gotta get uh, better at. Kendrick winced at one point and then was kinda of working out his ankle on the court. Yeah. And uh, and maybe played it a little safer on a couple of fast break opportunities. Mm -hmm. Is there something there? He's fine. He just tweaked it a little bit. He's down there getting a getting a cold tub right now, uh, or at least he was before I came up. So he'll he'll be fine. How many minutes do you need to get out of Mav and Colbert? I don't know. I mean, it just depends on the game. I mean, that fluctuates depending on the opponent, depending on the matchups, depending on what's going on with Nana, uh, you know, with fouls, you know, all those different things factor in. Uh, but those guys got to be ready to go. And they, they, they've got a, uh, you know, a lot of the other guys kind of will have a feel for how many minutes they play and when they're coming in. Those guys are going to be called upon maybe at a little bit more random times. It takes a maturity level to do, to you know, to be effective in that role. Um, you know, we need both of them to be be ready to go. Time for one more if we have it. Coach, we all marvel at Ray's strength. Where does he stack up pound for pound with the guys been around? Well, he's physically a man. I mean, he just, you know, he's... The thing I'm most in, uh, proud of him, though, is, you know, his... The muscle inside his chest. You know, the... Uh, you know, his mindset and his maturity level over... You know, really over the two years is... You know, I'm, I'm really proud of him uh, for that. And as you can tell, just him up here, his mindset about where he's at right now heading into this, uh, he's about the team. And so, he, you know, he is strong. But, but him and Starks argue because Bass will always, you know, say that Starks pound for pound. Because, you know, Starks only weighs about a buck 65. But bench press is close to 300 pounds, you know. And so Starks and Rice will kid each other. And Bass will be the guy that triggers the argument over who's the – strongest player on the team pound for pound so Ray will tell you it's him Starks will tell you no it's me uh, but it's a good problem to have Cosby's also uh, as you can see from his body you know very physically developed and we got some other guys too that have gained you can see it they've gained strength they've gained weight um, and Mike uh, Bass does a good job with those guys and uh, you know we're going to continue to work to become a stronger team get better keep getting better you know we want to be about growth uh, you know, we expect to continue to improve every day. Um, we'll take a look at some things tomorrow. I know we gave up some layups. I mean, we're all excited about how we shot the ball, but the reality is they shot 50% in the second half. You know, I thought our post defense had some lapses, and we'll have to take a look at that and improve on that area between now and Monday night.